Welcome back, D-Traders. Our analysts are ready to share their red-hot market review of recent developments on Wall Street. Pessimism dispelled among investors after Nancy Pelosi left Taiwan. Nevertheless, analysts warn against the too much optimism ahead of a portion of the macroeconomic data. But let's sum up the results of the trading session on Tuesday. As expected, global uncertainty put a strain on the equity market as major indexes closed negatively. The Dow Jones was the most vulnerable to geopolitical jitters. It lost 400 points, or 1.22 percent. The Nasdaq shed the modest 0.16 percent, and the S&P 500 dipped 0.66 percent, to close at 4,091 points. All three benchmark indexes traded higher in the New York pre-market. It suggests the first day with the gains in August. The S&P 500 is expected to trade in the intraday corridor between 4,090 and 4,180 points. Escalating tensions between the United States and China, as well as the visit of Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan, dominated the headlines on a Tuesday. The arrival of the third important American policymaker irritated uh, Beijing. The Chinese armed forces uh, held military trials, including missile launches. All trading instruments responded to the high-impact visit. The US dollar advanced across the boat. The stock market slipped considerably. Taiwan is the key supplier of semiconductor chips that fit any electronic device from a telephone to a car. Thus, uh, unreliable relations between the United States and China assured Congress to pass the bill worth $280 billion to encourage the local production of semiconductors. Back to the stock market. Some stocks accelerated their rally. For example, shares of Pinterest surged 20% on Tuesday, after Elliott Management announced the purchase of 9% of shares. Uber shares jumped also 20% in light of the report on upbeat corporate earnings for the second quarter. Leaving Taiwan, Nancy Pelosi welcomed solidarity and democracy. And in response, markets signed uh, with a relief and went upwards. As for the economic calendar, investors should be alert to a series of macroeconomic data, such as the US ISM non manufacturing PMI, the composite PMI by SP 500 Global, the US services PMI, and the durable goods orders. Notably, Goldman Sachs said that financial markets remain vulnerable and might encounter trouble if inflation keeps on accelerating. Experts at Citi are worried that recent dismal economic data is a headache for the central bank. Now the chance of a global recession is measured at 50%. The US dollar traded in the red for the most part of the day, but it regained its footing in the New York pre market. After yesterday's 1% jump, the index is now trading quietly. The intraday corridor for the index is defined between 105.60 and 106.80. Apart from geopolitical jitters that benefited the greenback, it also found support from the comments by three Fed's policymakers. They confirmed the intention to vote for moderate monetary tightening. At the same time, they dispelled expectations that the central bank would make a pause in rate hikes earlier than projected. Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis President James Bullard said that the central bank would have to increase interest rates to 3.75 and 4 percent by the year end. It's a much higher than the highest level at 3.4 percent predicted by Bloomberg. Remarks from the Fed's policymakers pushes uh, yields of U.S. Treasuries and the U.S. dollar index sharply higher. For the time being, traders reckon there is a 44% chance of the Fed's rate hike by another 75 basis points at the next meeting in September. The prospects of another sharp rate hike halted a two-week rally on Wall Street and supported the U.S. dollar.
The USD card pair stalled its growth yesterday and is now trading in favor of the loonie. The currency pay is likely to trade in the corridor between 1.28 and 1.2880 today. The Canadian dollar is given in to its stronger American rival because of mounting tensions between the United States and China. However, the loonie is propped up by growing oil prices ahead of the OPEC Plus summit. Brent crude futures rose to $100 a barrel today after OPEC and its allies decided to increase the oil output just by 200,000 barrels per day. Energy investors are discouraged by the decision about such modest production rates, especially in the light of Joe Biden's visit to Saudi Arabia in the hope of a striking an oil deal. Following the news on the outcome of OPEC summit, Brand grew 0.07% to trade at $100.46 a barrel and WTI aged up 0.11% to trade at $94.56 a barrel. What is going on in the crypto market? Having approached support at $22,500, Bitcoin began a confident rally. The token passed the level of $23,300. Notably, the flagship cryptocurrency is taking the lead in its rally among other popular coins. Other digital tokens are trading mixed today. Investors are digesting the latest news, which does not add to optimism. Solana dropped 0.65% in the last 24 hours after a hacker attack at Seoul affected more than 8,000 crypto wallets and erased investors' funds worth four and a half and to eight million dollars in the top tokens like Solana, USD, Coin, Tether, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. The financial watchdog of New York fined the crypto di um, division of a Robin Hood markets at $30 million for its uh, alleged uh, breaches of rules on um, money laundering, uh, cyber security, and protection of consumer rights. Bearing in mind fundamentals, Bitcoin is a keeping afloat in confidence. If the asset overcomes resistance at $23,500, it will be able to conquer the peak of $24,100. Otherwise, the crypto will decline towards $22,500. To sum up, the risk appetite has not revived in the full yet. Thus, traders are recommended to evaluate the macroeconomic data and adjust their trading decisions to them. Trade prudently with the profits and see you online tomorrow.